I want to introduce tonight Father Matthias Thalen. Uh, how many of you were here last year? Father Matthias was with us, and we're very blessed by his ministry. Father is a young priest who the Lord has raised up in a mighty way in the whole area of really ministering in the power of the Holy Spirit. He's like a next generation priest who God has anointed significantly, and he's breaking through lots of strongholds, and he's breaking down walls, and God is using him in institution in the church, and helping him anoint guys at the seminary, and all over the place, and lots of people are getting empowered, and he's done some really good writing. He did his license degree in, um, what was it, in, in, in Signs and Wonders, basically, wasn't it? Healing and, evangelization. Healing and evangelization he did it in, which was none other than Dr. Ralph Martin thought it was really good. <laughs> Right? And uh, he's a real blessing, and he's going to lead us now. I'm going to ask him to come forward so he can lead us through tonight. And why don't we just stretch forth our hand, and we'll just pray a blessing over him. And, uh, right? Absolutely. Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on him. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on him. Melt him, mold him, fill him, use him, speak. So before I begin my talk, we're going to have a little short video, which is a preview of this, this documentary called Fearless. And so can you run the video? And I'll say a little bit something about it afterwards. I think in a word, what Catholics have been missing in evangelization is the divine power, the power of the Holy Spirit. We live in a culture where we are surrounded by the walking wounded. We are surrounded by people who desperately need the touch of the Lord. Evangelizing is not just communicating a message. God loves you. Jesus is Lord. Jesus died for your sins. It's about communicating divine life and power. It's the Lord actually touching another person through you. When there is an anointing of the Holy Spirit, that person that you're evangelizing is actually coming into contact with the Lord through you. The Lord gives us gifts, not for us, but for the people He wants to reach through us. All right. Jesus is doing wonderful things in the church. Jesus is doing incredible things in the church. Amen? I think the enemy wants us to be distracted about all of the corruption and the destruction in the world so that we do not recognize what God is doing in the church. We have to be convinced and continually fill our minds with the deeds of the Lord so that we can proclaim the deeds of the Lord with more power and with more might. And this is what's happening, especially with Renewal Ministries. And I, I will say I am very privileged to be a part of this documentary. You know, this documentary, actually, they called Renewal Ministries first. They called uh, Maura Smith, who used to work for BBC Documentaries, called Renewal Ministries and said, where is the Holy Spirit moving powerfully in evangelization? Because this documentarian, who's a cradle Catholic, had from her son had heard so many things happening in non-Catholic charismatic churches regarding people being healed, regarding people being delivered, regarding people having this joyful experience of God and wanting to go to church. And she didn't know anywhere in the church that was happening. So she calls her to a ministries and says, where is this happening? She was particularly interested in healing. 
And so they asked her to, to call me, and I just kind of punted to my friends Patrick and Aaron in, in Columbus, who had already begun doing a documentary on healing and street evangelization. So they were already doing it. And so what ended up happening is that uh, she ended up coming to Sacred Heart Major Seminary and recording with Dr. Martin, Dr. Healy, myself, and Dr. Tom Graves at Sacred Heart Major Seminary for this documentary. And a part of that documentary is, uh, is an emphasis on the power of the Holy Spirit in the proclamation of the gospel. Hearing the voice of the Lord and then proclaiming the power of the gospel and praying for healing in the midst of that proclamation so that God can confirm the truth of his word, that the kingdom of God has come, that Jesus has come to forgive us of all of our sins and bring us back home to be with the Father. This is what all of this is about. And so what did they do? They went down to Columbus, Ohio and recorded a healing service that I did. Now, we knew they were coming, and this pastor also was very eager for the Holy Spirit to come. Long story short, this pastor was believing in crazy miracles. One of his prisoners got healed when I went down there before, and he testified at all the masses. So the expectations were high. About 1,300 people showed up at this healing service, okay? And, and so as, as we're praying for healing, Jesus was healing people all over, I did, and last year, if you remember, I just said, ask the whole, we asked the Holy Spirit to come, and I said, how many, I want you to try to do something you couldn't do before, before anyone touches you, and last time, people got healed in that, here. We did that in Columbus, and I, had, I, I was praying like that, and I said, if you're 80% or better, I want you to, sh- to, to uh, wave your hands. About 90 people waved their hands, and they all came forward. It was It was crazy. So one of the reasons why I talk about this is this is what God wants to do in the church. Some of the greatest growth in the church is where Jesus is giving signs of his presence. Now we know that the signs of the presence point to who he is. He is Lord. And when we surrender to him, he gives us the very thing that we desire, and that is a relationship with the Father. That's what it's all about. And so when we seek signs... We're really seeking that Jesus might be manifest to people as Lord. That, that's what we're doing. And that happened to such an extent that night, and they actually had this on camera, except this last part, that a, a Jew there, who was a professed Jew, came, and he professed Jesus Christ as Lord afterwards. He could not withstand it. People who barely actually believed, they were just kind of curious, miracles, healing, what? They came, they're just like, I cannot believe what I just saw. Okay? So that's, that, that's what, what we're talking about with when it comes to the documentary. Now, that's only part of it, right? I think the, the, uh, the teaching that Dr. Mary Healy uh, and Dr. Martin give is worth the whole thing in gold. In fact, we had a screening of this documentary at the seminary. We had about 50 seminarians come on a Wednesday night at 9 p.m., and the seminarians were blown away. And um, some of the guys in the seminary said, Dr. Mary Healy's teaching on suffering was incredible and opened my eyes to the fact that, yeah, we really should be praying for healing because of the tremendous misunderstandings regarding the power of God vis-a-vis our own body, right? We've had, we had people who, uh, who just came, to a lot, came alive and said, wait a second, I've had God in a box my whole life. I want more, right? So what I want to say tonight before we pray is a very simple message that's very dear to my heart. And I believe it's very dear to the heart of God. So as I speak, I want you to pay attention to what God is doing in your heart and what God is doing in your body. Because I truly believe that what God wants to do in the church is far greater than we ever thought or imagined. It is far greater than that. And we have to make sure that we're not putting God in the box of yesterday's Holy Spirit move. We have to make sure that we are giving him permission to truly be Lord, and that is Lord of the expectations that we have. Because I truly believe that, I think there are some people tonight who believe that God's not going to give you any more, that you believe that you're saturated. Now, I hope that that's very, very few of you. But I do believe that there's, there's some people here that's like, at my age, at my condition, what can God do through me? God can't do anything more through me. I totally believe that is false. Okay, so I want to encourage you that, that, that this message that I'm simply going to just say is this. There is more. There is more of God. Amen. Amen. 
I want to tell you a little bit about my story as to how I go from a, uh, a kid, fourth of five children from Fowler, to leading a, a healing service for 1,300 people that's going to be featured in a documentary. And I'll say a very, very short part of that story. And it is this. When I was in, in, uh, when I was in seminary, or actually, actually, I was at Francisco University. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit came alive in me. And I realized that my first year of the priesthood, that I could start praying for people, you know, for more of the Holy Spirit, and people would actually receive more of the Holy Spirit. People would be baptized in the Holy Spirit at a healing service, at an at a outpouring of the Holy Spirit service. People were being changed. And I said, this is incredible. So I kept doing it. <laughs> And then I started, uh, I started reading about healing. Wait a second. I, I want interior healing for people. I desperately want people to come and encounter the living love of Jesus. But there are people who don't even believe in Jesus. How can it bring those people to want inner healing? And what happens when actually I, I'm hearing about people actually praying for healing and seeing physical healings? And that science is confirming. So how can I get, how can I, get, I want more of that. So I started hearing about people that are praying for healing. Started reading more about from, uh, from Francis McNutt. You guys know Dr. F Father Francis McNutt? It was Father Dr. Francis McNutt. He's a Catholic in the church, praise God, right? I uh, started reading his books. Started listening to and finding out um, who Damien Stain was, okay? If you, if you watch the documentary, you're going to see I actually mimic Damien Stain in some of the things. We had the Franciscan Friars of the Holy Spirit at the seminary. Like, yeah, he got that from Stain. Yeah, totally know he got that from Stain, you know. So I started reading it, and then I met Dr. Healy at a priest convocation. So Dr. Healy, I've been reading a lot about healing. We've had a couple of people healed physically at our, at our healing services, but uh, who do you recommend for praying for healing? And she said, there's a guy named Dr. Randy Clark. Dr. Randy Clark is the uh, president and founder of Global Awakening, who, uh, who in many ways, uh, the Toronto blessing was around him and a couple other people. Incredibly anointed man of God. And Dr. Randy Clark teaches about this, this teaching of what he calls impartation. He believes that when, when someone prays for someone else for gifts of the Holy Spirit, to receive more gifts for mission, you can actually receive gifts of the Holy Spirit from someone else when you ask, for faith, ask in faith. It's almost like a, the Holy Spirit is like contagiously jumping off of someone onto someone else. And Dr. Healy says, it's like, you know, talking about Mary and Elizabeth. Mary comes with the presence of Jesus, and Elizabeth is like, oh my goodness, how can the mother of my Lord come to me? And John the Baptist is doing somersaults and, and, and Elizabeth because of the presence of Jesus. Mary, who was the one anointed with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit overshadowed her, right? So he, he teaches this doctrine, and he says, when you receive an outpouring of, or sorry, sorry, he says, when you receive an impartation of the Holy Spirit, then you can actually manifest charisms that you weren't currently manifesting. Specifically, charisms for the sake of evangelization. So charisms of healing, prophecy, uh, evangelization, preaching, anointing, um, inner healing, everything that would be used for evangelization. And so he, uh, he has this book that just came out in probably 2012, I believe. It's called There Is More, okay? It's a book where he, does, he chronicles all the different impartations that he's seen in his ministry and in ministries around the world. So people who um, came to him or came to a service that he was at who were hungry and desperate for more of the Holy Spirit so that they could see revival everywhere that they go. These are people willing to leave their life here in the country and go to different countries and say, I want more. I'm desperate for more. And when they cried out to God and when Randy prayed, they received a great impartation. Oftentimes, what seemed to be a violent impartation, where they start shaking, they start crying, they start feeling heat or electricity. And, and sometimes it wasn't so violent. Sometimes it's a very peaceful thing. They were overwhelmed by God's love in a way that they were when they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. So what Randy is saying is that this is not the original grace of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's saying, if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, there is more. Because God wants you, he wants to give his gifts away so freely today because our world desperately needs it. So he says, there's more. And he preaches this message, basically, it's that he says, are you thirsty? Do you want more? And he basically gets his, the people in the congregation to be absolutely hungry and desperate for more. This is how he does it. And then he prays and the Holy Spirit just rocks people. Well, I read this book 
And little did I know that the book was actually written for the, also for the purpose of getting people that reading the book to have impartation, even if they're not touched by anybody. You can have an impartation in your, in your chair or in your bed. You know that, right? If you're really hungry enough and desperate enough for God, and you really just ask him, he can actually blast you wherever you are. And that's the best part about it, right? God is spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom and there's power, right? So uh, I read this book shortly before, right before Damien Stain came to Christ the King in 2013. You guys remember that? Who was all there at that conference? Damien Stain, the evangelist from England, he has a healing ministry, came to Christ the King. He's kind of one of my heroes. I had gone to a conference before and I was trying things out and he came and I was already primed. I was hungry. I was thirsty. I read this book. I was desperate. Lord, more of you at all cost. I want to manifest your love. I want to manifest you to everyone I meet. I don't care how foolish I look. I just want more. And what was, what's so key about that is that the only reason why I wanted more is because I knew that there was more. If you don't believe that God can give you more, if you don't believe that there is more, you're not going to ask the Lord for that impartation. Does that make sense? So part of what I want to impress upon you is that no matter what Jesus is doing in your life, he wants to give you a greater share of his spirit. He wants to give you a greater share of his anointing so that you can bring him to others. You can manifest Jesus wherever he plants you. Because what happened with Rachel and what happened with Pete can happen to any of us. So I'm at this Damien Stain conference. I remember this guy. He was about, um, I don't know, maybe 25 years old from, uh, I think it was Lake Orion. If you're here, if you remember that it was you, that'd be awesome. I don't even know what his name is. Random guy. Uh, Damien Stain said, I can't do any British accent. Otherwise, I'd do an impression. Okay, I want you to just now um, pair up with someone, and then I want you to pray over each other, asking for more of the Holy Spirit. Um, and so this guy um, puts his hand on me, and uh, I start praying, and I've, I rarely go out in the Spirit. And when I pray with people, I see people go out in the Spirit all the time, but I rarely go out, and I rarely have any manifestations. You know, it's fine. Didn't really ask for him very much, but I just started, he was praying with me. We're standing up. We're at Christ the King, where I'm in like the fifth pew on the right side, and all of a sudden, I start praying. I'm like, what's this? What's going on? My hands just start shaking. All of a sudden, I'm like, oh my goodness, <laughs> and I just start shaking more and more until literally my body was shaking all over. I felt love and power, like electricity flowing through me. I start shaking uncontrollably in the pew, and my feet were hitting the pew in front of me. It was like it was hurting, like I, but I couldn't control it, right? And all these people actually uh, thought something was wrong with me, <laughs> literally. Some people still do. <laughs> They thought something was wrong with me. So people are going over here, going over here, and I'm like shaking. I'm like, ugh. I knew right when I started shaking, I'm like, it's happening. What I long for, the Father is here, and I got excited. More, Lord. As I said, more. I just kept shaking more. <laughs> so, so this happened, this happened. I'm on the ground, right? And everyone's worried. And Damien Stain walks over and says, he says, leave if you do not have faith. He basically said he knew exactly what was going on. He knew that I was receiving more of the Holy Spirit. And so everyone that didn't really know what was going on, he left. And then I actually had someone carry me out. I was on, I had, this was happening for like 45 minutes. We had to move on to the next thing, right? So impartation, I'm excited. I got what Randy Clark uh, was talking about in his book. I wanted more. So uh, next couple nights, actually, in my, in my room, I just say, come Holy Spirit. And I just start shaking again. I went on retreat and I just said, I don't care. And I just wanted, I just kept getting this, this sense of power flowing through me. Now, the reason why I'm telling you all of this is that after this experience of learning about how there is more, right? Asking for it, becoming desperate for it and receiving it. The people I started praying for, for healing increased dramatically, and the anointing of God increased dramatically. I, I never forget, like, one of the first days I got into my office, I was meeting with this woman. Um, she, I, I don't even know, I didn't know who she was, right? Um, but she said, I want an appointment. And she's on the, um, on the uh, little couch in my office. And I said, let's just pray. And I'm probably sitting as far away from uh, her as I am butch. And I just said, come Holy Spirit. She's like, what's happening? What's happening? <laughs> she's like, the anointing just fell on her. And I just started praying for people in random situations. The anointing of God came with incredible power, with incredible frequency. I get to my new assignment, and we do this. I, I could go on and on. But needless to say, uh, the, the, the Spirit 
was released in me in a new way. And so I ended up actually contacting Randy Clark and thanking him for this, thanking Mary Healy for telling me about it, that there was more. And I started talking to other people about it. One of my friends, Patrick Rice, who is uh, in the video, him and his friend Aaron um, are in the video, had been, uh, were being discipled by Dan and Lynn Williamson. Can you guys stand up? I don't know where you are. Dan and Lynn Williamson, okay, over there, Pentecostal converts. Um, Lynn, and long story short is, um, have they been introduced yet? Are they not? No, no, no go ahead. You can okay, so, yeah, yeah, so Dan Williamson was a Nazarene pastor, became Pentecostal, was kicked out of the Nazarene church, and was, had a series of dreams um, about the Catholic church and converted. He does a lot of missions in Africa. He is uh, an anointed apostle of the Lord. He's great. So, I'm actually super excited that they're here because I really think that they're going to find a home in Renewal Ministries. Amen? These guys are on fire, but they started, um, both of them are very gifted and started discipling some students and some people my age in Cincinnati and in Columbus and invited my friend Patrick to this uh, this, uh, conference with Randy Clark. Same thing happened to Patrick. He received this impartation, and now Patrick prays with people, has incredible words of knowledge, incredible um, wisdom, incredible prophetic uh, uh, words come to him, and sees people healed as well. We were at One Thing, which is a conference, an ecumenical conference, this last uh, um, December, and um, we were praying for impartation for people. I was invited to give a talk. Mary Healy gave a talk last year. And we just prayed for impartation. There was a CFR who said, I've been praying for people for healing um, my whole life, and I just want more. I know there's more. And so we prayed for him. And he starts praying for people. And he, he sends me an email that says, Father, there are so many more people being healed now. So many more people are experiencing the touch of God since you guys prayed with me. Okay? Um, there was one of my students was at one thing. He received an impartation. He's a student in my scripture class. He shared the other day, so excited, that he was watching some videos on the faith with his dad and his brother in the room. And he's like, Father, Father, I got to tell you this. I got to tell you this. Uh, my brother doesn't even believe, doesn't go to church at all. My dad, he does, but kind of doesn't. And we were praying and the, we were really being touched by the video series we're watching. And then all of a sudden, he, I say, let's pray. And his brother's like, no, I'm not praying at all, you know? And he said, let's pray. He's like, is there anything hurting on your body? And his dad's like, yeah, my foot really hurts. It's been hurting for a long time. And he's like, let's pray. His dad gets healed on the spot. His brother's like, I got to change what I'm praying for. This is real. Like, <laughs> didn't even know. And now his brother's coming back to the faith completely, blown away by just that small little thing. He received an impartation. Seminarians who are hungry, who want more, receive our impartation. I can't tell you, uh, it, it actually started getting old for a little bit. Hey, Father, we pray for so-and-so, and they got healed. Awesome. <laughs> Just another day at the seminary, you know. <laughs> I, I, and I, I don't want to trivialize it. I mean, because it really is about manifesting Jesus. But one of the things that really strikes me is that there is more. And that it's just, it's just for those who ask. For those who believe and those who ask. We, like, we have a good father. We have a father who's madly in love with us. And we have a father who's madly in love with the people that he wants to reach through you. You know, so as we were praying, I had this, um, this incredible vision of like each of us being a flame. Like together, we're like this massive roaring flame. And each of us, as we go out, we're a little, we're a little flame going to our place. And sometimes our, our, I think our minds just stop there. I'm just going to be a light where I am. I'm going to be the only light, you know. That's great. You know what Jesus wants you to do? Pretend this is another person. <laughs> he, he, wants you to, he wants to set the whole world on fire, right? And guess what? Guess what? How do you do that? You fan into flame that little light you have, and you fan it in, and the Holy Spirit will touch incredible amounts of people through you if you are hungry and desperate for more. You like that, don't you? (laughs) So I'm going to give you a spiritual formula that I heard before we actually get into praying for more. A spiritual formula goes something like this. Desperation plus expectation equals invitation for God to act. Desperation plus expectation equals invitation for God to act. 
One of the things that Dr. Martin teaches very clearly at the seminary, and Dr. Mary Healy and all the professors teach at the seminary, and now I, because I'm a professor, teach at the seminary, is that we have a divine task ahead of us. We have the charge to proclaim the gospel to the ends of the world and to make disciples of all nations. I think much of the church does not realize the, 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 the weight of that task. And because it doesn't realize the weight of that task or it's ignoring perhaps the spiritual condition of the world, it actually tries to do it on its own power. We try to do it on our own power as if somehow we had the power to do that. You see, anyone who's seeing reality as is is going to become desperate for the empowerment to complete the mission that Jesus gives to us. And that desperation isn't a kind of a fearful, anxious desperation. It's a desperation of saying, God, I need you. I need more of you. I need more of your spirit if I'm going to have the courage to share the gospel with this person. I need more of you if you want me to be a husband that is more sacrificial for my wife. I need more of you. I'm desperate for more of you because I see how little I have. Desperation comes from a place of humility. It comes from a place of union with God. I don't think a lot of people in the pews are desperate because they don't even know who they are in light of God. And so it falls to us. We know who Jesus is. We're lifting Jesus up as Lord right here before all of us. What a beautiful sight. You go into a parish on Sunday. Do you see what we see tonight? No. It's our task to make that happen. So we have to become desperate, not just for our own sake, God, I I want all these cool gifts. I have to become desperate for the sake of others so that the gifts can manifest Jesus and bring his glory and his kingdom to bear on them. Desperation. Are you desperate? Or as Randy Clark says, are you thirsty? Because remember what Jesus says in John. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as scripture says, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. And it says, and he said this of the spirit which had not yet been given. Some of us just have a little trickle coming from us. He wants rivers of living water. So that when people encounter us, they encounter the very life of Jesus in the spirit. So the question is, are you desperate or are you thirsty? The second thing is, what? Expectation. We have to be convinced that God wants this more than us. God wants the salvation of the world more than us. And that way we can actually take the burden off of our shoulders. God wants it more than us. And therefore, we have to believe that it's the Father's pleasure to give us the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Fear not, little flock. Do not be anxious, little flock. Stop worrying, little flock. It's the Father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. And it's the Father's pleasure to give the world the kingdom. So we can have confidence in our desperation. We can have confidence that when we ask the Father for bread, he's not going to give us a stone. Amen? When we ask the Father for a deeper share of his anointing, he's not going to give us a serpent. He wants to give us more of the Holy Spirit. If we who are evil know, if we who are evil give good gifts to our children, how much more will the Father give who? The The Holy Spirit to those who ask. So I want to encourage you, Tonight, as we pray, I believe this is really on the heart of God. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so confident. For you to just really, from a place of desperation, for a place of thirst, and a place of, of expectation, to ask for more. Some of you, as, as we begin to pray, might have physical manifestations of the Holy Spirit come upon you. And that's okay. If you begin to kind of shake a little bit or tingling, that's Okay. If you begin to kind of feel your heart beating fast, you begin to sweat, you begin to cry a little bit, that's okay. Those are just signs of God's presence. But as we pray and you have any of that happen or your increase of love, increase of faith, increase of love, or I'm sorry, hope, I want you to say, Lord, I want more. I'm desperate, I want more. And you are a good papa. You're a good father. I want more. And we're just going to pray for that. And I want to invite you to come forward. If God is touching you, if God is doing something on you, what we want to do is follow what God is doing. This is something that John Wimber was very good at. He was saying, we want to follow what God is doing. We want to see what the Father is doing because Jesus could only do what he saw the Father do. Jesus was constantly focused on the activity of his Father. 
And so if God is blessing you, if you're, a sense, if you're sensing this anointing, we're going to ask you to come forward first so we can bless what he blesses, so we can cooperate with what he's doing and bring about that transformation, that more in your life. And the good news is we can, we can ask for more any day, we, any day of our life, any day we want. But tonight, because we're together as God's people, a people who are hungry to make Jesus known, to make him loved, I believe he's going to pour out his spirit in an incredible way. In fact, I believe some of you are being touched right now. As I'm speaking, your heart is being inflamed. You have a burning in your heart. You're being touched right now because God is giving you more. Amen?